I'm Cave Jewel, and this installment of Comic Smack has been brought to you in part by the good folks over at the Laser Brain Patch Company. Go to Laser Brain today, and you can pick up some awesome, nerdy, geeky patches that will take your boring jacket to the next level. I know they certainly did for me. They've got all your favorite themes zombies, classic David Bowie movies like Labyrinth, just to name a few. And they have more than just great patches, too. They also have pins decals, little figurines, all sorts of fun stuff, and you know they care, and you know they take things to the next level, because they do fun packing jobs like this. This this is what their zombie theme merchandise came in with. Isn't that really awesome? It's not blood, but it looks like blood. And with that, everyone, we'll be sure to get to the video for today, which is... We're taking a closer look at Superman issue number 26. Raising a child can be difficult, let alone a super-powered child. What's gonna happen next? Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So, as we join the comic, we're actually treated to a flashback of Clark as a young man. Pa Kent was putting him through his paces, saying that if he really wants to be the man around the house, then eventually he's gonna have to learn how to work the farm. But, just to put a little spice on this one, Clark is allowed to run the farm farm for one complete day, but he can't use any of his superpowers. He's got to do it the old-fashioned way. The themes of fathers trying to relate to their sons is continued in the present storyline, where Superman and Superboy join forces to battle a bunch of alien robot drones. John is growing up fast. He's getting more and better use out of his powers while he's even started flying after the end of the previous Manchester Black arc. This is a good thing, but at the same time, too, it's a bit of a problem for Superman. His son is striving for independence doing his own thing, which means he's also not listening to Superman when he should, and he's causing a lot of needless collateral damage. Clark opens up about these feelings to Lois, saying he doesn't want his son to slip through his fingers, especially given the whole post-mind control thing Manchester Black did to him. Lois, intelligent lady that she is, surmises that what Clark and John are going through right now is probably not so different from what Pa Kent and Superman went through when he was a boy, and as such says that maybe Clark should do the same thing with his son that his father did with him all those years ago. Let him take the reins, let him make his own mistakes, and see what happens. Jonathan is totally gung-ho about getting to be Superman for a day. But little by little, his own inexperience and own recklessness begins to shine through, like how he saves a mother and child from a burning building, but doesn't check to make sure he couldn't bring the whole building down. Superman also won't stop being a complete and total helicopter dad during this whole thing never too far from his son to try and criticize everything he's doing. Things take quite a nasty turn when the father and son duo end up coming face to face with two supervillains, Dreadnought and Siphon. Once again, Superboy thinks he has this one in the bag and charges the two baddies, not knowing that one of their special abilities is able to interfere with their superpowers for just a moment. And hey, if a short brush with death doesn't make you take your head out of your ass, nothing will. It's at that point Superman and Superboy decide that they are stronger together, working as a team, and Superman also concedes that he needs to let his son live a little, make his own mistakes, and eventually become the man that he's meant to be, not just a carbon copy of himself. A lesson that, hey, wouldn't you know it, Pa Kent actually came to himself as the flashback story ends, and yeah, there you have it. Father and son end up winning the day, have themselves a touching little heart-to-heart, -heart, and everybody goes home happy as the comic comes to a close. So there you go, everyone. Superman issue number 26, a fine little one-and-done. Tomasi really is doing a fine job job mining all the great story material that can be had when you let Superman have a son. Moreover than that, I love he's reflecting Superman's boyhood and upbringing by a normal parent with no powers to Superman's own upbringing of his own son complete with powers. The life lessons may be on a much bigger scale, but at the end of the day, the morals are all still the same, and I like that. Some great artwork in this one, too. A lot of really interesting panels that are very layered with lots of stuff going on. Plenty of robots, plenty of particle effects. It all looks really, really nice. To think we've only had the character of Jonathan Kent Superboy for a short amount of time, and yet he's grown by such leaps and bounds, you would think he's been a character in the comics forever. That's just the hallmark of a really good story, if you ask me, which is why I give this one a very nice 8.5 out of 10. So there's Superman for the week, everyone. I hope you liked it, and while you're here, check out some of the other videos I have on offer. And there's my social media feeds, both on screen and down in the description. And before I go, don't forget to check out Laser Brain. This has been Cape Joel. Thanks for watching, and I'll See you all again later. Bye-bye.